Well, anyway, I'm Mark Lapidula, and I run the screenwriting program at Yale University, and I created the screenwriting program at Penn and at Hopkins, and I ran all of them simultaneously for a 20-year period. Now, I'm mainly just at Yale, but I lecture all over the country. I mean, I just got back from Naples. I did not want to come back. Uh, luckily, the lecture went so well, they invited me back March 16th, some other event, and it's, that was a film that changed America. I do lectures on movies and analysis uh, all over the place. I'll be going to Dallas and Seattle, Seattle next month with that. But, you know, my main thing that I do is that I work with screenwriters. And with screenwriters, what's kind of interesting is I get them before they've ever done anything. They come to me, they've never even read a screenplay. We're not talking about like Robert McKee, who has a lot of people in the industry that take his seminars and they get a lot out of it. As do beginners, they get a lot out of, you know, a seminar, right? It's like three days, he yells at everybody, uh, charges them $750, $850, whatever. And uh, yeah, and if you want to buy his book, Story, that's probably going to save you some money, because I think the book is like $40. Um, I don't know if it's in paperback, but in hardback it was. But it's sort of the same lecture. The point is, there are seminars and there are all kinds of things all across the country. All these programs, MFA programs, USC, UCLA, NYU, all over the place. Uh, they haven't necessarily made films better. Do you understand? You have to be the writer that teaches yourself how to tell a really good story. That's something that no one can teach you in a classroom. That's something you just have to have. You have to be a storyteller. And we're not natural born storytellers, at least in America. The majority of people, they can't even tell you about what they did you know, yesterday and make it interesting. You want to die as they're telling you, recounting what they did yesterday, whatever, at the job, or you, know, you just wish there could be fire, a fire in the building so you could evacuate. Um, the point is, Right? As a screenwriter, you must be the kind of person that if there were a fire in the building and somebody's telling that story, you don't want to leave. You're going to risk your life just to hear the rest of this story. You see what I mean? And that's the, that's the difference. Right? You might be sitting here because something happened to you or something happened to someone you know or you experienced or witnessed or whatever and that's all great. That is an event or that is a sequence. That is not a movie. That's not a full story. If something has to come before it, something has to come after it. You have to be able to tell a beginning, middle and end narrative. And again, it's much harder always than it looks, right? So, a couple of things. What's interesting about you is that we're going to like to see what you're doing. And you might be very advanced, you might be somebody who's just at the beginning, but no matter what level you're at, you get beat up. Everybody gets beat up. So today, we're going to get a little beat up. You know, if I write a script, I have to, I have to give to somebody and they're going to give you notes and they're going to say whatever. I have a friend who just published, uh, you know, he published his third novel, and it's a real press and everything, and I caught like three typos in it. I mean, this is, you know, uh, that happens, right? And kill them, they kill them when I called them. I said, you know, why didn't they proofread this better? He said, oh, we hired proofreaders and everything. People miss, but that throws off the experience. If you go to a great meal and there's a hair in the, on the steak, it's not as good, even if it's a really expensive filet mignon, it's not gonna be as good. So you have to become somebody who's gonna say, all right, I don't know how much you all know. How many have written screenplays in here? Okay, how many have never written a screenplay in here? Okay. So we have both ends of the spectrum. But just because you haven't written a screenplay doesn't mean you won't evolve quickly if you get serious about it. Because there's people that within just a few weeks, few months, they can really be up and running as somebody that when they read <coughs> the scene, and you look at it, you go, well, this has sort of a presentation that would match a professional screenplay. But when you start out, you never match a professional screenplay because you don't know what you're doing yet. And you don't know the format. You haven't introduced these things. And so it's different from playwriting or writing a poem or whatever. Uh, there is a thing that we're going to learn in the afternoon class, you know, professional screenplay format and all that, that you have to incorporate in order to give your presentation, to give your story that you're going to write across all the pages that it has to be to be a complete narrative. It's going to give it the best sort of look to anybody, the best presentation to anybody who's going to be hopefully fortunate enough to read your work. Because they're going to read and go, oh my God, this is a script I've been looking for because we can do something with this. I know people that want to shoot this, that want to act in it, that will want to say these lines, that will want to direct it. So that's what you want. Now, the majority of screenplays that are written still need to be re rewritten even further, but the writer's always in a rush to sort of get it out there. That can be a mistake, especially at the beginning. You've got to write a few screenplays before you even know what you're doing. The other day, somebody hired me, you know, they get my name, you know, the Yale brand is a great brand. I, I can't deny that. And he paid me $500 to read a script. And I mean, he had a lot of good stuff in it. But then I said to the guy, I said, how many screenplays have you read? He said, two. 
Right. I said, right. I said, you read two, two, right. and you had the you had the courage to sit down and write. I said, well, this changes everything. I mean, you know, wow, there's a lot of stuff here, but still, almost every other page was a paragraph monologue of a character speaking. It was eloquent, but when do I go to a movie where one character after another speaks for a page, a page, right? So, not easy to tolerate. Nobody, and he wanted to know, like, do you have any connections that would want to buy this? And I'm like, no, I couldn't show this to anybody, even though it has some good stuff in it. Good, good, but we're not looking for good. We're looking for great. People want stuff that's gonna be like, really separates itself. So, you can get there. You're just not gonna come out fully formed as a screenwriter, you understand? I mean, Kubrick, kind of came to the medium fairly formed, but he very quickly evolved into the great filmmaker that by Paz of Glory, he's 28 years old, he, he kicked ass with that movie and all of his movies after that, virtually, except Eyes Wide Shut, which was unfinished. He died before it was really done. But other writers and directors, they kind of evolved to greatness. Like their early work, they almost want to pretend like it wasn't even there because now they know what they're doing. And you got to, I mean, I said to a, a guy at Yale, he's written three major books Charles Musser's his name, on silent cinema. I said, Charlie, I mean, they're major. Some consider both of them in the top 10 most important books ever written on cinema. Certainly one is in the top five. Ever written on cinema, right? Charles Musser, great guy. I said, how did you learn to become such a great scholar like that? I mean, all this, he goes, by writing the books. That's how he learned to become what he is. You're gonna learn to become a screenwriter by writing screenplays, but you don't wanna take off for the journey until you're really ready. Like, we're not going to go climb Mount Everest today, right? Dress the way we are. Even though you have jackets, it's not enough, right? You've got to have altitude training. You've got to have all these things. Well, the same thing with the screenplay. So, let me explain something about writers. Writers think two things. Number one, everything they write is fantastic and better than anybody else's. Shit. And everybody else's stuff is shit to a writer. The only people's stuff that they really respect and admire are the writers and directors out there that have inspired them to become a writer-director. So, those people are great, I'm with them, and everybody else, oh, sad, pathetic, <laughs> losers, right? Okay, that's the way it is. I'm gonna say in the afternoon class, right? Who loves pepperoni pizza, right? Who would never touch a pepperoni pizza if they had a gun to their head? Why, because you're a vegetarian? I, I just, I just Mark, so please, pepperoni, yes. don't eat any, <laughs> don't why would you there. not eat? I don't eat pork. I don't eat pork, okay. Is it a religious thing or just, okay, all right. But it could be, right? Yeah. Could be a religious thing. Could just be a moral thing. I don't want to slaughter pigs. <coughs> it could be that I am a vegetarian. But you see, that guy is never going to love your pork script, no matter how good it is. He's not going to like it. And so you're going to say, oh. But you see, that guy might. But it's a question of sometimes your script gets to the wrong person. He's going to pass. It's not real rough. You can't, you got to take it, right? Just like she would never accept your pork script. But even though he raised his hand, if I hand my pork shirt, if I hand him a pepperoni pizza, and it does have a hair in it, and actually the cook, you know, sneezed on it, and I watched that as he was making it. And then I saw, like in Seinfeld, when he went from the bathroom doing number two, he forgot to wash, or he neglected, let's put it that way, he neglected, he probably knew he wasn't, to wash his hands. My father, growing up, worked in Brooklyn, New York in the 1930s in a restaurant as a busboy, and he said the cook... He never saw the cook wash his hands once. He never ate any food from that restaurant that was prepared by that guy. All right, but anyway, my point to you is you would still not eat the pepperoni pizza, and yet you love pepperoni pizza. Because there are scripts that might be an action adventure which you love, and then you start reading it, but the execution, the kind of style of writing, there's a whole bunch of things. It's unprofessional. The way it's presented, it sort of, it kind of, it deep sixes this experience from being a positive one. All right, now.